about this panel. Thank you, Danielle. I was going to say, we need to turn that off. I'm excited about this panel because these four icon agents, I mean, maybe some of them haven't achieved icon yet, right? Because they're newer to the EXP, AI. but they are definitely icon agents. Um, it's exciting because all of them um, didn't start very, very long ago, but between the four of them, there's like over 210, 215 deals that they've done personally. And then a couple of them, I believe, are starting to grow their teams. Um, so today we're going to ask them a bunch of questions, and then if you have a question that you have, just jot it down, and then at the end we'll hopefully have a few minutes to pick their brains, right? So I'm going to introduce one by one. Um, this is Miss Misty Lyons, and um, she's been in the business 22 months, and this last 12 months she's sold 53 homes. She's helped 53 wow. families which is pretty amazing. Yay, girl. Um, I think that's awesome. Um, you said your super, Courtney said, Courtney is her assistant, said her superpower is she's got grit and, um, and drive, but she thinks she's a chameleon and she can be whoever you want her to be. And I think that's really good when you're in sales because you're talking to a lot of different personalities and versatility is huge. So um, I'm so excited about you being here, ma'am. Um, yeah. And then um, as far as we're going to talk a little bit later about you know investments and things that they have, but you had 11 rental properties in Louisiana, mm -hmm. and then they sold those, her and her husband, and they're going to reinvest that money here in Raleigh. So mm -hmm. welcome. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, and then Mr. Tyler Chestnut, um, four and a half years in the business, um, so not very long. In this last 12 months, he sold 75 homes himself-ish. Oh. Well, so I sold about 60 myself, and then okay. 15 were 50-50 splits. splits. Oh, there you go. Okay. So I didn't okay. truly sell 75 myself, mm -hmm. but got, okay. Over got paid 50. on 75. There so. you go. I love it. I love it. Well, that's amazing. The average agent, guys, in the nation sells four homes, four to six homes. So if you sell eight homes a year, you're selling double the national average. So use that when you're talking to sellers when you're new. Um, and you do renovations, you do Bitcoin, you've got your rev share as far as your um, investments. And your goal is to hire another agent to kind of partner with this year? So I'm trying to hire a uh, full-time assistant and not just have a transaction coordinator. Mm -hmm. And then I'm gonna start going you know, in the hiring mode for agents. But I wanted to get the foundation set first. I love it. And then this year to date, you have 35 closings, 13 million in volume. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. That's awesome. That's going to be a good year for you. And then, um, and your superpower, I think, uh, you know, I don't want to, I yeah. mean, I think maybe we missed that, but you, you said. So my one flaw is sometimes showing up on time. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's not the best flaw to have, so yeah. my superpower is to fly. So. Yeah, he would like to have a superpower be flying, but, you know, maybe that'll be in your, in your dreams one day. You <laughs> can fly here. Um, all right, and then next we have is Danielle Harvey. Um, Danielle's been in the business seven years, but she, um, the last 12 months has been independent. The first six years, she was the number one national salesperson for Epcon communities. Those are retirement communities. So she sold more homes than any other person at Epcon in the nation. Um, and then she went off on her own and sold, what, 33 homes your first year alone mm -hmm. in the business with her awesome partner has been Thomas being her social media guru and um, and this year you have a goal to sell 40 and grow from there yep. and um, you you have invest you have an investment home you do freelance work um, of course you have your um, rev share and your stocks and investments like that what is your superpower um, well that was a hard one I ask a lot of questions usually it's the why behind it just to understand people's motivation yeah, so good at asking questions, which is good in a sales environment, right? Yeah, we have to ask questions. He who asks questions is in control. Yeah, I used to get in trouble from my parents for asking <laughs> why, why, why. But I was like, now I'm making a lot of money. So exactly, exactly, awesome. And then last but not least, Mr. Jason D. Uh, Jason Depkovich. So six years in real estate. 
Um, last year, he sold 40 units on his own. Um, this year, he wants to do 45 deals. But I think what's cool about you is you have a higher um, price point. Right. So he, I'm trying to jack that up rather than doing transactions. Exactly. Yeah. So you, he has um, a great income because he can sell more luxury homes. If you haven't watched his videos, go follow him on social media. They're great. He should be on HGTV. Mm -hmm. um, they're really, really good. I would hire you if I had a, a TV <laughs> channel. Um, and then the great thing about you is your previous career was you were a teacher. Yep. Um, which I think teachers make the best realtors ever. Um, and your superpower is, um, I think your connection with your agents, you do a lot of pop buys and mm -hmm. you really spoil your people. Yep. Right? I would say so. Any other superpowers I need to know? Mm. No? <laughs> I would like to fly too, that's great. Yeah, and you, <laughs> he help. gets here on time. He gets, yeah. He gets yeah. timely. Next Thursday we're doing a class on flying. Yes, next Thursday <laughs> class on flying. So, yep. Tyra's going to teach us. Um, all right, well, let's go down the line real quick. I think because um, new agents or seasoned agents might want to hear, you know, do you have an admin? And you touched on it, Tyler, but do you have an admin or transaction coordinator? Like, who runs all these deals? Is it just you or No else? way. Um, I have um, Cordiali. She is, she wears many hats, but she's also an agent, and she handles everything for us as far as, my my stuff and as well as the new agents that we're bringing on so she is very available for them too um, we're almost to the point of hiring additional um, administrative staff she's getting overwhelmed with the amount of um, listings that we're taking on so um, we're trying to grow there too I love it I love it and you sir you said transaction coordinator just one person yep. yeah but you really do need somebody full-time yeah. Are they on staff or do you just they're about to be with no just per transaction right now yeah which I love per transaction if you're a new agent and you can just go hire an admin and say hey I'll give you 350 bucks a deal 400 bucks a deal it's nice because you don't have to commit to a salary mm -hmm. and I think that's the thing we all fear is getting into more debt and taking risk and bringing on another human that you have to pay for it's scary um, so no I think that's good but you're ready trust me um, especially with all your other businesses that they can help you run. Yeah. I wanted to lead with profit first and then when I hire someone, I know that you know they say the 90 day window, but I'm like, if I bring someone that's like family mm -hmm. and I want it to be for the long term. So. Yeah, I love that, I love that. How about you, Miss Harvey? Um, no assistance, me and Thomas have been doing all the paperwork, <laughs> kind of getting tired of it, but um, <laughs> we definitely need someone. We hired someone temporarily, transaction coordinator, but didn't exactly work out, so I'm looking for someone really strong that will lead like me and be like us, since it's a reflection of us. Mm -hmm. I pride myself in good customer service, so I'm a little picky, maybe a little control freak, but we'll find someone. Yeah, yeah. I think that's the hardest part is in the beginning we're all such drivers, right, and you want to do it all yourself because you do it the best, but you can't build an organization of one, right? right. So yeah, you'll find someone. How about you, sir? I do not have anybody. Uh, I almost did in January, and when I switched to EXP, they decided they did not want to make the move from where we were previously. So that kind of sent me back to just doing it myself. I'm also extremely picky, mm -hmm. and I literally would love to just clone myself and have myself <laughs> do the job, but that's not possible, so I'm, I'm just rolling. But would love to find somebody, because I think it would be nice to take a bunch off of my plate. And it's not even what's on my plate, it's what's being thrown away and not getting done that needs to get picked up again. So. Absolutely, absolutely, well, I love it. Um, so where do each of you get your leads from? Like where is your main lead source, would you say, when you first started in the business? And um, now? When I first started, it was just talking to everybody. Anybody who would listen, I talked to them, I'd ask them. Social media, just, getting in the buy sell trade pages and just really putting myself out there and letting people know who I, who I am and what I do. Um, you know, when I, when I first started, it was harder. Um, I, I was just very determined that, you know, I knew I could do it and I was just determined, you know, that somebody was going to give me a chance and, and let me do their deal and when they did, you know, it's been 22 months and I'm starting to really see a lot of repeat business and I try to do a good job of staying in touch with those past clients and now at two years 
they're starting to come back around and a lot of those folks are listing and you know moving on um, from where they are so just being out there and letting people know who I am and believe it or not I mean, as much as we post on social media, I mean, I see people, you know, post on a buy, sell, trade page, you know, anybody have a house for sale? And I'm like, whoa, 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 wait, you know me. Why are you putting that there? You know, you should come to me. And, you know, I, I've realized that they know that I'm an agent, but they forget. And so I just really, you know, keep an eye out there on social media, what they're doing and what, you know, they're saying. and you know, trying to pull them back in and, you know, they're like, oh, well, I forgot, you know, you're an agent. So just really being conscious of your social media and watching what your friends are doing, um, they forget. And we have to make sure that we're there and we see and we remind them. So and not be afraid to remind them. Yeah. Right. And you, so basically it's sphere, like, you know, mm -hmm. people that you've touched and buy, sell, trade is like somebody who's putting their house up mm -hmm. and hey my home is for sale so basically for sale by owner right well not necessarily that but like um like I, i'm down in harnett county so like ladies of harnett county mm -hmm. you know i see people post there hey thinking about selling our house um what should we do well why are you asking them ask me you know mm -hmm. so i'm like reaching out to them hey 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 you know i'm mm -hmm. here yeah i'm here i got you um so i just really keep an eye on what my friends, especially on social media, are doing, asking, saying, and that's been, you know, a lot of our our deals that we've gotten. And just recently, I know we talked about because you want to grow your team, and she just hired what two, three, part, three, three part time, or I had two, I had two full time, one part time, and it will Courtney. Yeah, well. and so she just hired three agents to help her because I'm like, you can't sustain this level. Like I did it to where 130 deals, it was silly. Just, I think 50, 55 is where these guys are at is max capacity for your sanity. And now they all need to <coughs> decide whether or not they want to grow their business. But you just hired three and now she's buying some leads because again, you got to mm -hmm. feed the, the, the machine and, and do that. So we'll talk, touch on that. But your main source was get yourself out mm -hmm. there and uh, don't be afraid to reach out. And love mind. It. And mind. 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 How about you when you started? Was it Sphere? Yeah, it was definitely my Sphere. Mm -hmm. um, I really focused on millennial generation X. And people 25, 35, because mm -hmm. I viewed them as, you know, repeat business, ones that are going to buy and sell for a long period of time. And then um, got lucky to partner with some investors starting out, and we do a lot of repeat business every year. And then the first year, like 2017, 2018, I made a lot of money off Zillow leads. And then that, you know, it's not as great as it was, but still helped me, you know, build an online presence mm -hmm. and um, build a strong Zillow profile and then social media, uh, LinkedIn, Instagram. And then, you know, every six months I try to dive into another resource. And if it works, great. If it doesn't, then I just go elsewhere. Yeah. I met you from... Um Brandon who was helping Tyler with his social media and I saw Tyler all the time on Instagram this is when I was start kind of started to get into it too and I was like well, he does a good job and then Brandon just reached out to me yeah. um, and like hey I want to help you do this and that's kind of how we connected um, then Brandon ended up coming to EXP and so did you and um, but yeah you did a good job kind of getting yourself everywhere because you can't be a secret agent when you're an agent right and yeah. people got to know who you are so so yours is mainly sphere but now adding in different lead flow. Correct. And like my, you know, these guys' Instagrams are probably nicer with in terms of what they post, but you know, Brandon was good at incorporating like software, sitting yes. in the end. Like before Facebook bought Instagram, I was getting a ton of leads. Yes. Like they had closed 10 buyer deals in 2018 from Instagram, mm -hmm. and now it doesn't really work that way, but you yeah. know, you just gotta adapt. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was, it was gone. It was, you could get leads from Instagram and people think we have these big social media followings, 3,000, 4, 10,000. Spoke to a guy yesterday, 100,000 followers on social media and people email him and, you know, message him all the time and say, hey, I, I need to get to this many followers. And he said, guys, I don't sell homes from social media. It's my business card. These 100,000 followers, if I get five deals a year from these followers, that's good. So just don't dwell on I have to have this presence just have a presence and that's your business card when people buy and try to find you so how about you ma'am your main lead source I was like, whoa, whoa. let's get back, ADD. <laughs> uh, yeah, ADD. You know. um, so a lot, basically referrals from coming from on site and made really great relationships with um, all my older folks, my 55 plus folks. Um, 
and I used to do monthly events for them, monthly parties, and I'd always sell a house every time I did that. Uh, so I always kept in touch with them, and then the O. Kelly to Carry one is where I really form relationships. But anyways, then I started marketing, marketing to them when I went out on my own, and then it's just kind of taken off. And then recently, Thomas designed this awesome postcard. We never did a mailer before. Um, and we got a call, got a listing, sold it, and we did it again. I'm like, oh my God, we got two more calls. And we did it a third time, did it again. So we're gonna continue to keep doing that. Um, but it's to that same neighborhood. So basically it's like personal referrals or someone who knows someone, but I haven't purchased leads before. Maybe I should have. That's marketing. Stay out of her neighborhood. No, <laughs> Don't. 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 You know, to check the mail. Yep. I don't know if those are generation. Yes, exactly. They actually read the mail. Yeah. But they also look really good, so it doesn't look like a generic, like, hey, this is the recent comps in the neighborhood. Yeah. So I love it. And Mr. Jason? Uh, my sphere is definitely 100% where my business comes from. I've grown up here for 30 years. I was a teacher, so having all those connections, I worked at the YMCA almost my entire life growing up, so having that sphere was a great base and then i would say my main platform is just facebook um, like you had hit on i don't get any leads from instagram i think my instagram is just stuff that i like and i post on there people like it they like it um, but facebook i'm very much i guess i let people in and that's what i was telling kevin like i feel like i show a lot of my life even though i don't want to but the majority of the people that end up calling me they're like oh i see everything that you're doing on facebook your dog's super cute. I saw you just went on this vacation and you're killing it in the real estate market. Will you come over and talk to us about this? So I feel like it's very personal. Um, I've never paid for leads. I definitely do farm one neighborhood. So stay out of my neighborhood too. Um, <laughs> those postcards. But that's been effective. Definitely, I've for the past three years, I've sold the most homes in that neighborhood of any, out of any other agent. Um, but yeah, I'd say those are the two main things, the farming and then just the sphere, Facebook. I love it. I love it. So you can see, like, you know, I think you can grow a business anyway. I mean, we've had different panels. People cold call. They, you know, they, they buy billboards. I mean, you could either buy the business, right, and put your face everywhere. You can build the business like I think all of them are doing through social media. And you can't build it overnight, but you can truly in 22 months build it pretty fast. Mm -hmm. um, what would you say, and I'll open this up. We won't go down the road, but I'll open this up to say, um, what would you say your most expensive learning moments have been in the business um, and anyone can jump in i'll say mine i don't really have one even <laughs> i'm super cheap i am very very frugal i don't spend money on anything other than my clients um, i think last year my total everything that i spent was four percent of what i made um, so i am very 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 lean and i don't make mistakes like that with money at least <laughs> with money so I don't have one unfortunately right. and that was that's not meant to brag I just I don't spend money on myself either so that's kind of something that I'm now working on it's, you a, have to. it's a flaw right so yes. yeah 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 because you you know and somebody said to me you can't you can't make money by saving all the time right I mean <clears throat> you can't and, and I used to be just like you, Jason. That's why I was like 130. I'm going to keep it all. I'm not growing this team. And, yeah. you know, growing up poor, I wanted to do it all. But it's like you you kill yourself. And you can't sustain at that level forever. Um, so, yeah. How I'm pretty you? cheap, too. Um, you are cheap. Yes, we I'm, talk about that all the time. I'm pretty cheap. Like cheap people on the panel. I'm not. Today. I am. <laughs> I'm not really fancy. Uh, I sell down in Hardin County in the country. I am just me. Um, probably for me... I, my most expensive thing is, is I probably need to spend it um, you know, doing various things, like hiring people. You know, I'm like, oh, no, we're not going to hire anybody. We're going to do all this ourselves. And um, it took me a while to hire an admin. Uh, it took me a while to hire a transaction coordinator. I wanted to do it all. And um, but then I didn't want to spend it. But I found by spending it, I make more. So I just really didn't get better at spending it. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's sort of like, a, and I love this analogy, you open a restaurant, right? You, you are all have a business, and right now you are the hostess, the waitress, the mm -hmm. cook, the chef, the cleaner, the dish person. You're doing it all, and to give great service, how do we diverse? Like, what are you best at? And that's what my coach would always say. What do you love to do? Well, I love to call people, 
get appointments, go on the appointments, present, and then I'm done, I, and then negotiate. Mm -hmm. I don't want to do anything else. So if I hire to all the things that I hate, I can scale. Mm -hmm. And I hate paperwork, and I hate you know all that stuff. So how about you two? Anything you want to add? Mine is just most of the time in construction. Mm -hmm. I didn't get a survey, and it cost me 30 extra days in the house, or mm -hmm. didn't order windows in time. And, just learning lessons like that, but mm -hmm. it's, it's definitely costly in ways, but construction right now is just, it's tough. Crazy. Yeah. So more mistakes on the deals, which I'm sure we all, you know, make mistakes on deals here and there, and you pay for them, that's what your commission's for. I teased John Pajeda, he's not here today, but he's bought like, I think, three sets of appliances so far. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, John, if you're on your secrets out. But I mean, you do, you just kind of go, oh, okay, well, I'm gonna fix that, and, and this is how I'm gonna fix it, so, all right. Um, if um, so, when you were in the business, so you're new, you know, I think all of you actually started at KW, which is great, you know, because you know they can train and help. And when you were there or anywhere, like who were your mentors? Like, how did you how did you come into the business and then go, okay, what do I do? How do I start? Like, who did you follow um, to know what to do? Everyone, mm -hmm. I mean, I was looking for anybody. Oh, they're doing good, I'm gonna follow them. Oh, look at this person, they're teaching this class for free. I'm gonna go here. I mean, it was anybody who would talk to me, anybody who would listen, anybody who would give me any advice. Um, I got bad advice and I got good advice and I, I feel like I tried it all. Well, not at all, I still got a lot to learn, but you know, I tried everything that anyone told me. And if it worked, I kept it. If it didn't, I tossed it. And you know, just, I mean, I'm, I'm always talking to people, asking questions, who knows. Mm -hmm. um, I just, I wanna do, you know the best that I can by my clients and learning, being knowledgeable, and just asking anybody who'll listen. You know what they're doing, especially the people that you want to be like. Did you ever hire a coach? At KW I, or anywhere outside of that? You know, outside of KW, no. Okay, I'm not. but you had one there. Yes. Okay. Okay. In the locker room, we well, yeah. were required yeah. to. Got it. Got it. But I'll be honest. <laughs> I'm gonna be really honest. I um. I was I went so fast mm -hmm. that I didn't have time to utilize the coach. Right. It just I was busy because you were grinding. Like grinding. Yeah. She was like she's a grinder. She's I just didn't got have grit. time. Yeah. You know. I, I mean, sit and slow down. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I love it. I love it. How about you? Like, how did you? Um, my biggest mentor was probably my first broker in charge, George Womble. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, he has like fifty years in the business. No, no, he was at Keller Williams Raleigh, okay. mm -hmm. and you know he saw more to me than I saw myself when mm -hmm. I first started out, and kind of, you know, showed me the ropes with contracts, you know, helped me with developments, and you know, just has so much experience and wisdom. Mm -hmm. And then, like you, you know, like you were saying, it's being a sponge and getting mm -hmm. information from whoever you can. And you know, my biggest thing is I showed up every day yeah. mm -hmm. to the office and treated like a full time job, mm -hmm. and just sat in the desk and worked there. Wear your suit every day. Yep. yep. No, no time. Yeah. So right. suit every day. So. No, I love that. I love that. How about you? Um. So I'll probably jump back to when I was on site. So previously, I was a pastry chef, making thirty five thousand dollars a year, and um, kind of got to top of the game. I'm like, I know I could do more, but I'm not book smart. So I struggled a lot with school. Um, so I decided one day to say to Thomas, I can sell real estate. I don't know how I'm going to do it, but I'm going to do it. So I quit my career, decided to work on site, and then I was like, I have to learn whatever I can learn. I was literally a sponge. I met with the construction people, learned about topography, how to read maps, anything and anything I could learn. Uh, I would say that's probably what made me the most successful. Um, and then I guess when I switched to general brokerage, um, I had great relationships with the 55 plus agents, so I kind of leaned on them to get where I am. But I'm always learning. I always want to learn and be the best, and that's kind of what it is. I love it. I love it. How about you, Mr. Yeah, Mitch? I uh, started at Fonville Morrissey, and there was not much of like a camaraderie like you don't really learn from other people there I guess you could say not very much everyone stayed in their own lane let's put it that way uh, moved to Keller Williams uh, I introduced you to Martha Newport but she yeah. is still at uh, Keller Williams in Chapel Hill she is 
amazing businesswoman, so I've always looked up to her. She's always helped me with a lot of different things, but I think just collaborating with people on a daily basis as much as possible is probably what's grown my business the most, and everyone's kind of a mentor to me in some way or another. Like, I look at her Instagram, and she has, like, the best photos, obviously, because of that guy over there, but <laughs> that's something that's like, Sorry. I want to work towards that, you know what I, I mean? So I think it out. It's gonna get busy. every agent has something that I look at that I'm like, okay, I want to try to mold into that or bring that into my business in some way or another. So not, like, one true mentor, I guess you could say. Yeah, I was talking to, I can't remember who, and, and she was like, oh, that lady, she does this and she does that. I said, do you realize that you're saying all this and poo-pooing what she's doing because you're envious of it. You, you actually love what they're doing and you wish that you did it. And I used to be that way. I remember Kevin would say, I would, he would come into the office and I would say, Kevin, did you see their website? Did you see their, at that, we didn't have Instagram, you know, 12 years ago or whatever. And I'd say, their website is beautiful. And you go, look up their stats. They sold six homes, like you sold 60. And so he would always bring me back to, you don't need to have all that, but I was always admiring. And I realized now it was, you're admiring. You're not like MBS, you're just admiring. So um, I think if your eye goes to somebody, you see in them what you either have in you that you want, right? And so um, I try to like spin that in my head. Like I'm not envious anymore. I'm like, wow, I love that and I wanna go after it. I love that. So what are, um, every January 1st, I remember I used to wake up and go, oh my God, can we do this again? Can we have a successful year? Do, what are your fears? Because I think, I think it's important for everybody to hear that we're vulnerable humans, right? And we have fears still, even though you're all wildly successful in the business um, and people look up to you now, like what are your fears every day? Well, I mean, mine, the biggest thing is that too, you have you know, a strong foundation and you have a business like Tina or some of these other bigger teams. Like if I get hurt or I get sick or I'm irrelevant, you know, mm -hmm. and I'm, my production's gone away and it's like every year's a new year and you know, I'm more concerned about the newcomers. Who's going to come up? Who's got that drive, that hunger that's going to you know, compete and get to the top? But mm -hmm. honestly, being at this firm and seeing the, I don't want to say level of competition, but the talent mm -hmm. is really motivating. About you, what's your fears? Oh, I have tons of fears. Um, I think not being the best, I always struggle with that, that I'm not the best just because I did struggle in school and I'm not smart as you've heard. Book smart, not that I'm not smart. I'm people smart, that is my strong superpower, I would say. Um, I could read people and have really good intuition, but um, I let my fear get in the way, like, oh, I'm not smart enough because I don't understand that, or that's that's my biggest fear, I would say. I'm still working on that. Ashley and Tina helped me, and um, since joining EXP, I was like, oh, I can't be a listing agent. You know, I'm used to working with buyers, but now I have like six listings right now, whereas before they would never, I would never have done that or had the confidence to believe in myself, so... Learning on believing myself and confidence. Yeah, and I, I told her, I said, you're a great buyer's agent, right? And she said, yeah, I love buyers. I said, do you meet with the buyers, show them houses, consult on market analysis so they know what appropriate offer to put in the house and you know make sure they make a wise decision on value? She said, yeah, I said, you're a listing agent. I mean, it, it's not different, right? It's, and, and I think the industry, which drives me nuts, yeah, one you've got listing agents and buyers agents. Pick one. No, we're all. There was never a pick one before. <coughs> Teams decided to pick, right? And and you have team leaders that only do listings, and then the buyer agents. But I think all of us to have a really equalized career, you have to do both, and you can do both. I mean, there's some other things we have to do: pictures and marketing and things like that. Sure. But but yeah, she was always a listing agent. She just needed to believe it. So, yeah. how about you, Jason? Any fears? I think just, can I reproduce what I just did this past year and do it again, if not better? Mm -hmm. um, so I think the past two years I stayed very consistent with how many homes I sold and my GCI, and I, it definitely did not bother me being a single person making that much money by any means, but it's more so just that, you know, once January 1 hits, is this going to be able to happen again? So without having, you know, infrastructure that I think I should, that's, it's always nerve-wracking. Yeah, so. yeah. Um, I think for me is making sure that I set myself up for passive income for when I'm tired of doing this. Mm -hmm. um, you know, when the years have passed and I'm just like, you know what, I'm tired. I don't, 
I don't want to do this anymore. Just making sure that I have things set up for the future to make sure that my family is taken care of when, you know, when I'm just give out from going <laughs> on the battery. Just yeah. yeah, it's about we, year 17. Okay. Got a while, but I started a little late. Yeah, yeah. Well, but it's for everybody's start, different. I mean, I didn't start till I was 39. Um, so I felt really late to the game. I felt like, you know, I'm really behind. Um, how am I going to catch up? You know, these people have had, you know, 20 years to get their business where it is, and how am I going to get there quick? So, is there a quick? Yeah, there is. <laughs> I mean, I feel like there is. Well, you're getting there quick. I mean, there is. Actually, that's true. There is a quick. In this day and age, if, knowing what we know, if there is a quicker. I, if I can do it in 22 months, anybody can. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So, how do you guys stay motivated to do this job? Because I feel like. It, it's a roller coaster career, right? You meet a great client, you have this amazing, you know, experience, and then you have another client that's not so amazing, and you're like, why am I doing this job? I mean, how do you stay motivated every day to get up, jump out of bed, and go find new business? Because I think that's the biggest thing, right? We have to have new business every day. I don't stay motivated. <laughs> so, that's good. That's uh, honest. He's, he's very direct. And I don't. Honest. Yeah. Yeah, we, we've talked about this. I am. I'm not motivated daily. Um, like the past three days, I, like I've started watching the Harry Potter marathon on HBO Max. And I'm not a Harry Potter fan, but I was like, what else am I going to do right now? Um, and it's not that I'm not working, and this isn't a joke, I swear. It's just yeah. I'm not, I'm, I, I'm not always motivated. And right now, I'm, I talk to Tina a lot. I'm just in this rut where I don't want to do this anymore and it's you see all this money being made and I feel like I'm not working hard enough and I'm not doing Popeyes I'm not doing events because of COVID even though I could be and I'm making an excuse as to why I can't be um, so I don't know right now I'm not motivated just to be very clear so it happens yeah it happens I mean that's such a vulnerable thing to say yeah. you know in this business it's like I gotta get up and grind and grind and grind. nobody wants to grind I mean you're you know right I mean that word is just think about it it's just Word, but you hear it, right? I mean, they sell like posters. I'm grinding. That does not sound like a fun job, right? You know, so um, so I think it, it is for me. It was it was ups and downs, like Jason said. It's like you're you're up on cloud nine, and then all of a sudden you're like, oh my god, I hate my life, and then up on you know. So so how do you stay motivated? Do you watch Harry Potter movies? <laughs> no, but I do love some Netflix. I do go on binges of Netflix, but. Um, I mean, I'm the same way. Some days I'm not motivated. I came from Epcom being the top salesperson and making a lot of money to um, I need a mental break and I took, oh, did I take a year off? I don't know. Semi-retiring for a year. Um, and then decided, okay, I'm mentally right to start this again. Um, but I have the same thing. It's ups and downs and some days I could want to blow my brains out. but. Um, when I do get in those, I try to talk to Tina and Ashley to, and Thomas and bring me back to reality and why I do because I love people, so that's what I try to remind myself. But it is struggle some days. I don't feel like doing anything. Mm -hmm. I mean, you still got to do paperwork and stuff like that that I know. Well, Thomas has to do paperwork. Mm -hmm. There it is. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. We work on it together. <laughs> that's right. It's the family business. It is a family business, but um, yeah. I mean, I don't know. That's. I think it is a struggle for everyone. Mm -hmm. How about you? I mean, you're drinking a Red Bull. Mm -hmm. Is that motivated? He's getting the wings. That's right. <laughs> right. That event last night got to me. So, but the way I stay motivated really is, you know, look at Tina called for one. The people up here I'm sitting with, but getting out of my comfort zone really, like, you know, selling houses after two years of that. I was like, all right, I want to start renovating. So started doing that, and now I'm like. You know, there's more money to be made in land development, so now I'm trying to do that, and it's just giving me myself a new challenge every year and, and setting goals kind of motivates me. But it is tough. Mm -hmm. I'm not gonna lie, but you know, just gotta work through it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think any job. I mean, I I get motivated from watching you guys. I mean, we're learning so many new things. Um, you know, like land development. I never got into land development 21 years, but it's fun to watch these guys flip and 
Uh, we had a panel the other day, and there were four people, and they owned 550 um, units, just these four people. And it's like, I have 10, and I'm like thinking, woohoo, I got 10. They're like, you're a bug, squashed you, <laughs> you know? So it's just fun. So it's, it's, it's yeah, it's kind of reaching for, for new heights. How about you? How do you stay motivated? I schedule vacations. Mm. I schedule vacations out. And it gives me something to look forward to. So I know, okay, I had to go, 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 go for these next two months, and then we're going to Colorado. I had to go, 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 go for these next two months, and then we're going on a cruise. Um, money doesn't really motivate me because mm -hmm. I don't really set a goal because it does nothing for me. I, I want it all. Um, if there's money out there to be made, I want every single bit of it. I don't want any of y'all to have any. I want it all. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um, but, but, <laughs> but schedule. And the bad thing is, I don't even spend it. I just save it. We I can just break you. We can it. break you that habit. <laughs> yeah. um, but scheduling vacations, you know, having something to look forward to and knowing that I'm going to get this week off where I don't have to do anything. You know, I just leave it at home and, and there's somebody behind me, you know, who can take care of it. Well, it's somebody, you know, I was at a leadership meeting and we were talking about things that inspire people and I think it's sometimes it's time or money. And so mm -hmm. your time, mm -hmm. you want more time. Mm -hmm. I want more time now, but it used to be money because I never had any growing up, so I wanted as much of it as I could have. I want it all. Um, right? Well, let's talk about vacations, though, because 17 years, 21 years of my life, my vacations looked like I was at the beach and I was on a laptop and everyone else was playing and I was writing deals or calling people. Mm -hmm. I mean, be real about that. I never used to tell my clients I was going out of town because I felt I guilty that they would know I was gone, God forbid. Mm -hmm. So when you're on vacation, all four of you, I mean, and Jason, you've had some amazing vacations, so I don't know how you do it with party one. How do you manage that on a vacation? Have you truly had a vacation no. or you're unplugged? No. I need an app. <laughs> <laughs> or any time I go to do something, the phone just rings and rings and rings. I'm like, I... Go to Colorado to meet my eight-month-old niece. Haven't met her since um, she was born. First time in May. Non-stop on the phone. So I don't, I need, we talked about me and Thomas. We have to schedule or we're going to go insane and I'm going to be back to retiring for a year to get my brain right. Uh, so I definitely want to do what you do mm -hmm. and schedule that every two months. That would be amazing. You know, I'm not unplugged while I'm gone, but... I know 100% that the people that are behind me, like, I, I left and went to Colorado when we made the decision to come to EXP. My admin had only been with me since November, and um, we scheduled a trip in January, and it was, you know, and she was really the one who's like, hey, we need to move. You know, we need to move now. And I'm like, well, I, I'm going on vacation. Like, <laughs> and she's like, you know what, I got it. And she did it. She did, the, yeah. she did our whole move. Um, wow. She, my phone time was limited because we were in the process of the move and she, she handled it. Um, I'm not unplugged, but it's certainly a, a lot better. And it's awesome. The, it's new the scenery, new yeah. scenery while you're working. Yeah. That's what well, real vacations are for yeah. realtors, right? <laughs> I'm just going to go work in a different location and feel like I'm on vacation, right? I mean, raise your hand with that, right? It just is our life. How do you handle it, Jason? You seem like you have a lot of fun on vacations. Yeah, you do. I do. Yeah. Because <laughs> yeah. you're watching Harry Potter movies, obviously. No, I definitely go. I'm definitely working. Okay. Um, I set time every morning. So, like, I can just remember the trip I took to, like, Switzerland for two weeks mm -hmm. with my sister. I would wake up an hour and a half before we needed mm -hmm. to be up. And I, it was a different time zone. So, I was able to catch up, do everything I needed to do. I was on phone calls still. Um, so, it was 4 a.m. where I was, but perfectly fine here to do what needed to be done. Um, so that's really how I manage it. I would say during the day, no, I'm trying to be off my phone as much as possible. And then at night, when it's time to like do it all over again, I will. Yeah. So Yeah, I think that's the hardest struggle about this business is you're always on. You're always on. You're always, almost like a, a doctor or a surgeon. You know, well, they need to have the baby, so wake up at 4 a.m. and go into the hospital because you have to go deliver this <laughs> child. It's like, nope. The closing's not happening, so get off the beach and go handle this fire. And I, I can tell you, in 21 years, three years ago, I handed my phone and my laptop to Pam, my operations manager, and I said, you're me for two weeks, and or uh, 10 days. And Kevin and I went to Hawaii with our two um, sets of friends, 
And at the airport, I felt like a weirdo. I was like, everyone's on their phones, of course, all of them. And I'm like, I don't have a phone, so I guess I'll read a book. And it was almost like I had to reset, like, what do people do without work? Mm -hmm. And then when we got to Hawaii, I cried, I think, like six times. I was like out of jail. And I feel like all of us should have, we, I think realtors are at a stress level of here, but that's our normal, right? We just, we just are good here. Like we can hit that stress level, but normal human beings don't do that and they can unplug. And so I would say a goal would be to hire enough people to where you can actually go on a real vacation and not answer your phone. Like that is true freedom. Um, and we need that mindset break. And yes. so from there, my whole world was when I get back, I'm going to figure out how to do this more and have, you know, passive residual, buy more properties, you know, really figure mm -hmm. that out. All right. So last one is saying one thing yes. about vacation. If you want business, schedule a vacation. <laughs> yes. It will all come yep. right before you leave. Right. Yeah. Christy knows that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, all right, so final thing, and then we'll open it up for questions. Have you been monitoring, by the way? Yeah, I've been monitoring. Are they on screen? Oh, great. Because I just see yes. one person. I just see Kelly. Okay. Um, we'll open it up for questions and see. And, and put, put them in the chat box if you're watching, because um, I'm sure that, I mean, pick their brains. This is the, the point of this. But um, if you could give advice to any new or seasoned, um, what's the one thing you would do differently if you were starting your career over completely from scratch today, knowing what you know? Um, I don't know if this is really good, but I, it's just a thought that's crossed my mind. When I started, um, so I was supposed to start a job on Monday morning. I have not worked in 10 years. Um, I lost my husband. Um, he passed away. I remarried. I, had lived in Texas for years, lived in Louisiana, came back here, bought a house, and my new husband was also a widow, so we were, you know, just starting this crazy life. Um, I was supposed to start a job on Monday morning. I sat in my driveway Sunday night, crying, did not want to go, it was not something I wanted to do, but I had to do something. Um, got out of the car, walked in, I told my husband, I said, I'm going to real estate school, I'm not going to work tomorrow, and he was like, <laughs> How are you going to get in? Anyway, I'd already looked it up, had a spot, had it ready to go, paid for it. Um, just threw myself in there. After a year, I started looking back and I'm like, you know, I spent a lot of time just trying to figure, I mean, I still don't know. You know, I called Tina, I'm like, well, how do I do this? How do I do this? Um, you know, I just started on my own. I think sometimes I look back and I think, I wish I had started on a team um, because I feel like I would have learned a whole lot more about how to run a business and even at this point like how a team even works. I have no clue how a team works because I've never been on a team and never you know seen one and how how they run but I think part of me wishes that I would have joined a team so I know how a team works and to have had that experience from those around me and I feel like it could have really slingshot you know my career um sort of like when you if you're going to go open a bakery and you've never opened one you right. should probably go work at the bakery <laughs> right first to see if you or wherever right or I mean, the I business kinda, you're about to open I kind of feel like I just kind of got lucky by having the right people mm -hmm. around me and really searching for them who cares to tell me you know how to do these things because you know as you know no one teaches you how to do this you, know, you just have to figure it out yeah absolutely how about you sir mine would probably be you know time blocking you know mm -hmm. starting out you know really time blocking not letting my schedule dictate me and you know once you start time blocking i wish i would have kind of you know maybe spend a few more hours cold calling because I really never built my business off calling you know, calling for sub owners, expires, but you know, there's a lot of people that made a lot of money doing so, like Philip DeMood, Tina, and other people in that aspect. And part of me is like, I built my business in a new route, like am I leaving money on the table by not pursuing that? And it kind of like what you just said, you know, being on a team, you learn how to build something the right way. You know, I've made a lot of money, done a lot of deals, but sometimes I'm sitting there, it's like, man, I wish I had more, you know, you know, more structure, you know, more systems in place, mm -hmm. and I'm getting in place now, but it's almost like I'm backpedaling, exactly. losing deals and business in order to grow this the right way, but it's just, it's growing pains, really. Mm -hmm. 
So you also would be, in, if you were starting today, knowing what you know. Now, today is different than 10 years ago. We didn't have teams. You know, teams that were a, what, 10, 12 year old thing. Um, so, but today you would start on a team? I don't know if I would have started on the team. I mean, not every team is like Tina Calls, Marty's, or Shan. There's a lot of teams out here that aren't set up the right way. Mm -hmm. And the worst thing you want to do is be on a team, learn their systems, and then do the wrong systems and really not the way you should go about business. I think it depends on the person. You know, if your mindset is, you know, I want to build a brand, I want to build a business, and you want to you know, build a name in the triangle, you know, being on a team may not be the best move, but you got to be structured. You got to come in, you got to ask questions. You got to build this thing the right way, or you're going to be backpedaling like I am. So. Yeah, and, and I think too, you know, they, when he just thank you for the compliment. Um, behind the scenes, I always feel like teams are constantly changing. I mean, we've changed so many things on our team, so we're still in the I call it the hot mess express. It just keeps moving, but there's always change. So nothing's perfect. Our team is definitely not perfect. We're family. We're sometimes dysfunctional, right? But <laughs> we're family. Um, but you always have to change because that the, the industry is changing so fast. So even though, you know, the team looks great, we're still right now already implementing three or four new things. And I'm looking to other team leaders, you know, and, and picking apart their businesses to make sure we're headed in the right direction. So I'm happy to help you guys anytime, you know, on what we shouldn't do. How about you? What's your advice if you were starting over today? So mine's like really opposite and maybe it's just something. I would say believe in yourself. That'd probably be my biggest thing. If I would have believed in myself a lot sooner, then I couldn't even get more success than I already have. Um, still looking to grow. I got my inspiration with everyone that we're around. Um, but I would say that's probably the biggest thing. And maybe that's just something because I struggled with that my whole life. But if you believe in yourself, you can do it. I mean, I thought I'd be baking cakes for the rest of my life. Never thought I'd buy the cars that I have or be able to obtain the success that I always saw because um, I thought I wasn't capable of it. But then I proved to myself that I could do it. Then I wanted a little more, a little more. And yeah, that's probably what my advice would be. I love that. I love that. I mean, that it's the, the believing yourself thing, I think, comes in time, right? And mm -hmm. and. Um, and I tell them all the time, I mean, they, there is so much talent um, and it's the minute that belief bubble, like I tell Ashley all the time, she had a moment where I think just your year last year, it just clicked. She's like, I know this stuff. Mm -hmm. And then you believe in yourself and, do, and you feel unstoppable, right? I do, yeah. yeah. But so, I didn't before I had no She didn't, yeah. You know, you fake it till you make it. And you fake I it till you make but it. But I didn't believe it, so it was really hard for me to be a luxury agent. like. Well, Say do that. It. Yeah. And now I'm like, I'm a luxury agent. She's a luxury agent, yeah. folks. Just really, all kind of just is like, yeah. it's all limiting beliefs. Yes. A lot of our problems, it's like the way we think and not stepping out of our comfort zone. And it's, you know, a lot of your issues come from your head. It's mm -hmm. the stories, Daniel yeah. and I were just talking about. It's the stories we keep telling stories. ourselves. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, your own stories you make mm -hmm. up. Yeah. So I just think the whole mindset thing, you know, it was kind of a bunch of crap. But like, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> mindset is for real. I was like, I can't really say Mindset thing, you cry. You're that Kevin Call who's calling your mindset stuff. Right. But it's all mindset, right? No, it's 100% all mindset. Yeah. Yes. Yes. I, I was invited to a panel years, five, six years ago, and I remember Christina Valkanoff was there and Sharon. This was way before we were at Remax, I think. I was literally sitting on a panel like this with a table, thank God, in front of us, and my legs were shaking. I mean, I couldn't stop. I almost thought I was going to pass out. I was so afraid just to talk about my business like this. And it's silly. I mean, it's so silly, but you're like, what if I say something stupid? What are, what are they going to think of me? What? Are, it doesn't matter. Like people are all have the same fears and they're so thankful that you're up here talking and they're not talking. But this is a superpower I mean, that I'm you're kind growing. Of shaking. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> so, I know, but I mean, the more you do it, guess what? The, the easier it gets. And Jason, we'll, we'll end with you as well. I mean, um, and you're so great on camera, and I feel like you have such mm -hmm. confidence. Like, you know, I was going to say, I yeah. don't feel like I lack that, which is no. good. No, I was going to say, one thing that I wouldn't, really don't. <laughs> one thing I wouldn't change about going into real estate is just being authentic. Mm -hmm. um, I think that people will read you immediately, and if you're fake or phony or you're not really in it to help them, then they're going to turn you off immediately. And I think that's something that I've always prided myself with is, you know, I turn down listings if I don't believe in what those people are trying to do. I, I have the confidence to do that, you know? Mm -hmm. um, but one thing I would change is I have absolutely no database whatsoever. I have nothing. Not a spreadsheet. I don't have names anywhere. I have nothing. Wow. 
Um, so having something like that, and again, this kind of goes into probably the infrastructure that I mentioned before. Um, I just think how much more could I be doing right now if I had better systems in place or someone to do those things that I still have not yet hired because that's probably a limiting belief of I want to keep all the money myself or I'm not going to find the perfect person or something like that. So definitely have the systems. I guess that could just be a whole systems I would bubble. love that as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, it's the, you, you're a high D um, and patience is probably not your virtue. No. So, I mean, to sit there and have to input all that data, shoot me now. Right. Oh, I would oh, totally hire it out. And there's probably admin that would just do that, you know, just for you. So you don't have to hire a salary. Um, well, are there any questions? I mean, in well, I'm just curious where his data is. Is it just on paper right now? No, nope. it's, it's in my head, my phone, and Facebook, essentially. That's where I... I don't, I don't know how to explain it. So, so like your old files, you have your old files? You mean like? Like the old. Yeah, I, I mean it's all in dot loop and yeah, the old ones from like Fondo Morrissey are just in a folder, but I don't go back to those. Okay, so I mean it's easy, at least you have the data, it can go somewhere. Somebody yeah, can... Jason, yeah. How, do you, how do you baby your clients, I mean your, your past clients if you don't have it? In a database, I mean, I guess the only the one right database down, I do have is basically the. I know, it's crazy that I say this is like the Christmas mailers. Okay. So mm -hmm. I update that every Christmas with all the new people, and then yeah. anything yeah. related to. So okay, I guess I do have a database, but it doesn't have their phone numbers, it doesn't have their emails. I mean, it's very much just like I yeah. keep in contact with people through pop buys and events, and yeah. so that's why right now that's all slacking. So I feel like I'm not in this business whatsoever, and I'm watching Harry Potter. But uh, <laughs> normally I'm not, and it's like I keep track of people through that, and it's like these people are getting it because of this, or they're in this area, so. Yeah. What if you did a, because um, you love Facebook, what if you took all of your clients and put them in a VIP just work. I don't Facebook group? So just but, he, yeah. Yeah. The, but think about that, like they would all be in the same group and then you could like do little contests with them and all the fun things now. I think someone else I would love for them to do it, but I don't want but to But I'm saying it. you pay someone to do that. Like no, they'll just look at, they'll look at my regular Facebook and they'll comment. And if they want to comment, then I tell them. But I then they hi. can all see each other saying amazing things about you. Like, he's so great, he's so wonderful. And then, the right? It's like testimonial after testimonial. Maybe I'll do that while I watch episode six. You need an assistant. If anybody watching, he is so great. one great higher way. Well, that's it's taken how long, though, you know? So. If anybody watching has a good person, that send them to Jason, please, because there are some not just good. People. They need to be perfect. <laughs> okay, well, <laughs> <Good job. laughs> that's me. That's, that's also probably why people don't want to hire one. one. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm pretty just cheap to hire one too, but I'm telling you, I don't think I could go back now. Yeah, no, um, there's no way. I could never run a business with that. No. What I do every day? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, not without my amazing team. And they're here. It's Terry. Yeah. So, all right. Any other questions, guys, that anyone in the room has? Anyone? Anyone? Anybody online? We got a little shy group. Go into the chat. I am in the chat. Okay. okay. So, I think we only have one person on there. No. No, no, there's, there's, there's a yeah. there. Well, thank we're you kidding. guys we're for kidding. doing this. I mean, yeah. obviously, you yeah, know, great. we um, have a lot of talent in this group, in the Freedom Builders group, and I know all these, these people, if you called them and you just wanted to pick their brain or take them to coffee and see how they did it, um, I know they'd be willing to do that. And um, yeah, in between so. Harry Potter episodes. In between <laughs> Harry Potter episodes, don't call Jason on Harry Potter Day. But um, but Sounds thank you all for attending, and thank you guys for doing this. Thank you inspired me. Yeah. And thanks everybody online.